Welcome to Adventures in Small Business. Uh, this is a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office, uh, Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the MIG Center for Business and Leadership, and also the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. My name is Dennis Wong, and I'm from the Hawaii Small Business Development Center. And today we have a husband and wife team who owns uh, Uncle's Handmade Ice Cream. I'd like to welcome Paul and Barbara Logan to the show. Oh, thanks for having us. Thank you, Dennis. We're happy to be here. Thank you. And I thought you have a very unique story because as a husband and wife and you co-own a business and you're a manufacturer and distributor of your own mm -hmm. ice cream. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, why don't we start by telling us why did you choose Wailua as your home base of operations? Well, it was natural. I grew up in Wahiwa, actually, and Leilahua grad, go mules. And then uh, <laughs> our family moved to the North Shore, Wailua, in 73. And so uh, I, uh, it's close to home. I have a two-minute commute all the way from my house to the factory, and uh, it's a great place to work and live and play. Mm -hmm. Great. Tell us what inspired you to start your own business and how did you come up with the idea of uh, making and selling ice cream? Wow. Well, we've done a lot of businesses uh, through the years. This isn't our first one. Mm -hmm. And we were actually had a lettuce farm on the North Shore selling <laughs> lettuce to restaurants on the North Shore. And once a week, we'd go to a nice farmer's market in uh, Waimea Valley. Yeah and we'd sell the lettuce. It was an evening market, and they would often have a lot of dinners, but not a lot of dessert options. So I, well, we have been in food business before. We had a restaurant years ago, and I said, well, we're here anyway. Why don't we make a dessert? Maybe we could ha have a little extra sales with selling a dessert. So we came up with an ice cream sandwich, thinking that people are walking around, maybe they're holding a bag, so they need a one-handed thing to eat. So the uh -huh. ice cream sandwich seemed like a natural and we gave it a try. We brought 20 of them one week and they sold out. They were gone. Mm -hmm. we thought, well, that was interesting. Well, so the next week we brought 30 mm -hmm. and same thing. Boom, they were all sold out. So we, uh, at the farm, I was growing Lilikoi uh, plants. Mm -hmm. And so we said, well, let's, you know, that was our first flavor. We yeah. took the Lilikoi, we made the ice cream with it, we baked some cookies, and they were just like an instant success. And, so that and was a natural match, those yeah. two together. That was a perfect match. It was a taste of Hawaii. It was locally grown and locally made. And so we put it out there, and the customer said, yes, give us more. Uh -huh. Well, how long have you been in business, and um, how did you get your recipes? And what's unique about them? Well, first of all, we've been in business six years, just over six years now. And the, the recipes are basically came out from just using whole natural ingredients. So we don't use artificial flavoring. We don't use artificial colors. And we try to put as much uh, natural flavor into the product as possible. So instead of using banana imitation extract or uh, that we take 30 pounds of bananas and we peel each one and we caramelize them and then we make the ice cream with them so when so you get like this intense uh, wow uh, flavor of banana and they're handmade too and they're all handmade so we bake the cookies ourselves and we scoop we have a very sore thumb to prove it <laughs> after hundreds of thousands of sandwiches we're like okay so it is a handmade product uh, and we try to do as high end super premium as we can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what flavors do you have and uh, do you offer any special flavors during certain times of the season Absolutely, absolutely. We have a, a base flavors that we have year round, of course, the vanilla, chocolate, cookies and cream, mint chip. Uh, we try to bring a lot of the Hawaiian flavors. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned, the lilikoi and banana, we do a coconut, we do a macadamia nut. They grow coffee right up the hill from us in Wailua. 
So we get the green coffee beans, we roast them. Uh, my brother's a coffee roaster, so he ro <laughs> custom roasts them for us. And then we cold brew that, uh, 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 the beans and then make the ice cream. So Pretty we get good. this amazing coffee ice cream uh, from using the local product. Uh, seasonally, we try to change it up so that there's some variety. So when people come, they have something different. Mm -hmm. And at Christmas time, we might have an eggnog, a pumpkin pie. Uh, Fourth of July, we'll do an apple pie a la mode mm -hmm. type of thing. Valentine's Day, usually strawberry. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it gives me an opportunity to experiment with new things. We just came up with one that I've never made before, but my first uh, customer tastings were really successful, and that's honey lavender. And they grow lavender on Maui now, and so we can use a local product and, and come up with a, kind of a very different flavor. Mm -hmm. Well, Barbara, what is your favorite, and do you find, uh, what are the popular favorites? Mm. Popular fa yeah. flavors. I think we're especially known for our flavors that come from Hawaii. Uh, my very favorite is the Lilikoi. I just smashed my mic, sorry if I blew anybody's ear out. Um, is the Lilikoi, that passion fruit flavor that's so tangy and good. Mm -hmm. And then it must be the coffee is a close second runner up. Our, the banana flavor, we call the Funky Monkey, is one of our very most popular flavors as well, and that's mm -hmm. very Hawaiian. And of course, cookies and cream just seems to be everybody's favorite flavor of ice cream, no matter where they're from. So that's always a really popular one too. You mentioned too about people recognizing by certain area, like in Waikiki mm. versus to the other areas. And uh, could you explain a little bit yeah, more? Yeah, very if true. I know Paul growing up here is aware of the different different cultural communities that are that are found on the island and he has recognized that different flavors are popular among the different groups yeah, absolutely and waipahu where they recognize like lilikoi it's a huge seller but when we go to waikiki it's not known to the tourists so that one doesn't sell at all and so we have to kind of manage the flavor varieties depending who they go to and we try to bring some different ones so they can learn and, and grow with us too with the new taste sensations. But we know they're, usually people gravitate to what they like historically. Mm -hmm. So if they know that they love cookies and cream and there's these amazing other flavors there, they'll probably buy cookies and cream <laughs> anyway because that's what they like. So we have to accommodate every, everybody and every mm -hmm. taste that we can. Yeah. Well, in Hawaii, Gee, uh, everybody prides himself as being foodie, and oh, it's just yeah. such a uh, large diversity in the type of food, cultures. Um, but um, with this, there's a lot of people interested in starting up their own business. Food is a popular product. It um, is. What kind of things that you needed to do, being that you have your kitchen facility, and you not only manufacture, you distribute, and some occasions you may retail, Mm -hmm. uh, what licenses or what was the process to go well, through? Yeah, to start up, it's actually fairly simple. We, you definitely need to be checked by the health department. Mm -hmm. So you have to sit down, uh, have a conversation with them, tell them, this is what I want to do. And they'll recognize, is it a hazardous product? Is it potentially dangerous? Or like our cookies aren't dangerous. They're delicious, but they're not dangerous. Uh, dairy ice cream is. So if you don't uh, treat it well, if you have the temperatures go off, it could, uh, it could actually be, uh, um, have listeria and be damaging to your customers. So the health department recognizes the risk level and then make sure that you have the systems in place to manage that. Now, that might sound all complicated, but at the, when we started, we were operating out of a community kitchen. So you rent it for five hours once a week and you go in and you make your ice cream and you make your cookies and, and they will come and inspect that facility to make sure it is appropriate for what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we also started at a farmer's market and most farmer's markets require like insurance. So you have to have a little insurance in place and with those two, uh, those two items in place, you're ready to go. My understanding is you can be inspected anytime. 
So, that's uh, that's and, true. And green pass is all important. And when you're selling ice cream, the inspectors tend to love to come by and inspect you. <laughs> we get a lot of surprise visits. Yes, yeah, a lot of surprise visits. And they, they know in the back, not every sandwich that we make comes out perfectly. But we only sell the perfect ones. Mm -hmm. So some of the sandwiches go into our reject bin. Uh -huh. and, and it's kind of gotten known in our area. If you walk in and say any rejects today, that they're available there to, to, uh, <laughs> to help us uh, minimize those. Yeah. <laughs> well, from the business side, operationally, what were the things that you needed to start up your business? I know you started off from the farmer's market and you eventually grew, but what kind of things that you needed your side as owners to develop have your business grow mm. well i think starting with being at the waimea valley farmers market at the farmers market there um we were happy just selling our sandwiches at the farmers market where we were selling our lettuce and we kind of branched into the wholesale side of things when Waimea Valley approached us and said you know well we've got a cafe here and people sometimes ask us about those ice cream sandwiches and you're only here on Thursday evenings and so can we sell your ice cream sandwiches and so it was kind of like well sure <laughs> you know and, you know it started out small and eventually they're they are our very longest term and one of our very biggest customers it's been great they have two cafes one at the top of the falls and one down at the entrance and they sell our sandwiches at both of them it's been kind of fun i see what about in terms of the facility the equipment uh the necessary things to operate your business from production all the way to back from behind the scenes. Mm. Right. From a production standpoint, given what we do, it does require a lot of equipment. We have to have walk-in freezers, and we have probably 15 chest freezers uh, around the plant. Uh, we also have ob obviously need ovens and mixers and ice cream machines. And so th we've been fortunate that we started from a very low base. And as we would sell sandwiches and get enough, we'd say, hey, we have enough today to buy a freezer. And then we would buy a freezer. And so we could kind of accumulate the equipment as we go mm -hmm. as, in that, given that we had a, a bunch of equipment initially at the uh, community kitchen. Right. So, so um, after a couple of years, all at once we look around and say, gee, we, we have quite, accumulated quite a bit. We had enough to, to have our own standalone kitchen eventually. And, um, and it's the nature of what we do that it does take a lot of equipment. Yeah. Um, we're coming towards the end of the first segment. So that um, why don't we continue with this um, as far as the backside mm -hmm. and our next segment as we take a break. Sounds great. Uh, okay. Sounds great. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back. And why don't we continue with the same questions that as we talked about the operational side of starting your own business. What about as far as the support side? Yeah. You know, the business side. Mm -hmm. 
Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I think we're very lucky because we have two of us. Yes. Because otherwise, as a single entrepreneur, you got to wear all those hats yourselves. And um, so Paul pretty much runs everything to do with operations and making our amazing ice cream sandwiches and getting them out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, I do all of the finance, the accounting, the social media, the design and uh, the legal stuff, insurance, all that kind of thing. And it's been really great to have that division of labor. It's been really amazing because it's a lot of work anyway, even for two people, but it's pretty neat to be able to have two people to split it between. Um, I've had to really learn a lot because since the last time we had a business together has been uh, the advent of something called social media. And uh, that's not been something I've known a lot about. So I've had quite a learning curve to, to pick up on that. I knew about the accounting and the debits and credits, but it's been really fun learning about social media and keeping in touch with your customers. What are some of the unique uh, challenges or hurdles that you face in your business? The, well, we've been blessed, but it is always a, a challenge, I think, right now with almost zero unemployment in Hawaii is finding great people to uh, go on this path with you. And uh, we, we have uh, been real fortunate, yeah. and, and that's, uh, for us, it's, it's been uh, a blessing and some just really wonderful relationships out of that. The, um, with the growth, it, it's, it's hard because you're, what, there's never a normal. Whatever normal is today, tomorrow you're behind the ball again. So that's, that has been a challenge. Oh, growth has been a challenge too, although it's positive and it's what you want. Mm -hmm. But then also when it grows too quickly because you have to have the equipment, the facilities, the manpower, mm -hmm. staff for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, those are big challenges and hurdles that you have to plan for. They are, and one of the tenants that we go by is we have an existing customer base and we never want to grow so that we start not servicing them correctly. So like in the summertime, we don't take on any new customers. That it's a busier season, it's about, we get about a 50% jump in the summer of sales. And so we said, during the summer, if you call and ask, we want to be your customer, we said, okay, we'll talk to you in September. You have and a peak sea season. We, we do, have, even though it's Hawaii and it's great <laughs> ice cream all year round, there, there, is, there is some ebb and flow to it. Uh, so we do, we do have to manage growth like that, yes. Uh, and by the way, these are beautiful um, ice cream sandwiches, and you can see some of the samples here. Where can you buy them? I mean, where, where can I get them? Well, we, are, we have about 40, there's about 40 over 40 locations on the island where you can buy them in a retail setting. Um, you can get them at all the military commissaries, exchanges, and mini marts, and um, also at Whole Foods, and a number of locations I think we're showing on the screen now all around the island. You can see a couple of, we call them our bald spots there, where we need some more, need some more dots. But there's a lot of places on the island where you can get them, and if you go to our website at unclesicecream.com, you can click on the link to find the one that's nearest to you. You'll probably find one not too far away. And also, you're welcoming uh, new retailers or dealers for you, too, so they can, how can they um, become a dealer for you? Mm. Well, the nice thing is we have found that the way we get new people selling our sandwiches is normally because their customers have asked them about that. And so if they, they get in touch with us and say that, you know, we've, our customers have kind of said, hey, you know, you guys would be a great place to sell some uncle's ice cream. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And so <laughs> that's how we actually get our next customers. We mostly haven't gone out and sought them. They, they've been come giving us a call. So they can always look us up on the website. What kind of awards and recognitions have you gotten? Well, the main recognition is from our customers. They keep coming back and buying more and telling their friends and, and that. We, we have uh, gotten an award for Best in Honolulu. Honolulu Magazine uh, did an uh, editor's tasting. I'm, I'm not sure why they chose ice cream to do their tasting, but they did. And, and they, <laughs> they picked up ice cream from all over the island, and they awarded us the best uh, ice cream in Honolulu, uh, best ice cream sandwich in Honolulu. <laughs> Uh, we've been written up in Star Advertiser and a lot of uh, mag local magazines, tourist magazines, 
um, not paid for write-ups, but just uh, them coming to us saying, hey, you sound like an interesting story. Can we write about you? And uh, One of the most exciting things was that we were invited last year as one of the two um, local manufacturers to be featured in Chigasaki, Japan. Uh, representing uh, Hawaii, the Hawaii manufacturers, at their annual Hawaii festival. And that was really that was fun. That great, was so great. It was a big honor. Unique big experience, honor and fun isn't it? Too, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. And, They're our sister city. And that's a compliment, too, because in Japan, they have such great products. They do. Mm -hmm. They have very good ice cream. But we, we brought Lilikoi, we brought uh, macadamia nut, and the uh, coffee, the Hawaiian coffee. And, and it was a two-day festival, and we were sold out the first day, about halfway through the first day. And we had a, it was the busiest booth at the festival, so fun. we felt really honored. Well, what were some of the pitfalls or mistakes that you thought that you made and learned from it, and how did you overcome it? So, the, probably from my side, hmm. Well, I would say that we had, I wish we knew earlier about the amazing resources that are available here to help people who are starting out in small business. We didn't know about them for the first few years. For example, SBA, the Small Business Administration, has amazing programs, free resources, educational programs online. The Small Business Development Center, where we met you, mm -hmm. um, and we, we have just been thrilled to learn what kind of support is here. The Hawaii Manufacturers Association is amazing. Other local businesses helping each other who are all in the same boat here on this small island trying to make it go. And we learn a lot from each other and we help each other a lot. So I wish we knew about that earlier. And that's Thank one you. thing I would want everybody to know who's watching today. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus, oh, I'm sorry. I was just say operationally, I'd say the big mistake we made is we tried to say yes to everybody when we started. Mm -hmm. And so a customer would come up and say, gee, could you do this or could you do that? And we go, of course we could. We, you know, you just want to just want to make everyone happy. And and uh, you go down that path a little bit. And once you realize, look, we're a small company with very limited resources and we're going in five different directions now because I said yes all the time. You have to learn to say no. That, mm -hmm. that would be a lesson. And have to say, what is your path? What's your core competency? And where do you want to initially really marshal your resources? And when people say, hey, could you do this? You say, yes, but not now. Uh, and, and, you know, we're, we, we do a lot of not nows right now. <laughs> well, we met because you had signed up for um, advisory services, which yes. was no fees. And one of the questions that you had is, how quickly can we expand? Mm -hmm. What are the milestones that we have to accomplish? And what type of options? And you know, it's, it's, it's a very challenging and interesting question because people always want to grow, but sometimes when you grow too quickly, it can harm you. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to grow too slowly, too. Mm -hmm. and when you grow, what are the things that you need? And so yeah. that's what we discussed in our conversation. Yeah, it's been great. We have, like Paul just kind of described, a sort of a, our process was bootstrapping basically in the beginning yes, years. Absolutely. And we've kind of reached a point where we realized we're, the next leap is going to require more in terms of financial resources and business planning than we've had to learn yet. And so we were really excited to learn about resources like yourself and the Small Business Development Center who could help us with. Can you help us kind of lay out a plan that makes sense so that when we can go out and successfully get financing for our ideas and make this dream a reality? As a business advisor, I often find when I counsel and encounter clients or business people, they're, a lot of times actually they're, Ill, they're not adequately capital. Mm. So they don't have enough to expand and they're stuck in a, in a place. And they don't have the resources to grow or even to adequately fund their business. But at, you mentioned as a strength from the early get-go that you got into know and you're close to your banker. Can you tell us about oh, that and yeah. the importance? That was one thing we did right, which was, I like to say, before we were in dire straits, and before we had an emergency, we went out and sought a relationship with a banker. And I'm so glad we did because I could, you know, and, and again, another important thing, keep your books, keep your taxes current, 
because when you need a banker, you're going to have to have those ducks in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really been great because we got a chance to get to know him. He knows us. And he's been able to look ahead for us and say, I predict that you're going to be needing this down the road. And if you guys would start doing this, start implementing this program, if you could start keeping track of this, then I think I'll be able to help you when the time comes. And it's been amazing. That is a great resource. And I recommend everybody do that. Get out ahead of that. Well, what do you see in the future for uncles? Are there plans that you can share with us or goals that you have? <laughs> Total control. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're focusing this year on expanding to more areas on Oahu. As we mentioned before, there's some pockets, Hawaii Kai, and, and that we're not, we don't have a presence and we'd like to, and we've been requested to, so it's just getting out there and, and getting those locations up and running. Uh, we'd like to get to Maui and the ba uh, other islands. Uh, we've been requested a lot to go over there and the probably medium term uh, plan is some of our uh, national customers have asked if we could supply them on the mainland so there is a bigger uh, arena out there that we're looking at too the big market that it, that's would be a huge step for us and i think for any hawaiian company to you know, and they've done it. You know, King's Sweetbread has gone nationwide and uh, Bobby's Ice Cream has gone nationwide. You know, so there's some really great success stories out of Hawaii that have started small like us. And we're using them as inspiration and saying, OK, that's we want to be like that. And we, it seems like the opportunities there. So we're uh, that's our uh, one of our goals. The Hawaii brand is a strong one. Yeah. And you've been close to the community and you know, starting from the farmer's market, mm -hmm. uh, your relationship is growing up on the island. And uh, what type of involvements or where do you see your community relationship continue? Well, we, we, um, we got a lot of input from other small businesses that were a little further down the path than us when we started up and we try to do the same to uh, ups, uh, new starts that are in, mostly in the food business because that, that's obviously what we do. And we can give them advice on locations and, and resources, how to get into the military, how to get to Whole Foods, you know, and we try to mentor them and, and share whatever information might be helpful to them. And that we uh, definitely participating in the Food Manufacturers Association, the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, doing benefits to uh, both uh, yeah. uh, local nonprofits we like to oh, benefit. We've we got a few seconds left, and why don't we enjoy this wonderful ice cream, and maybe if you can tell us just briefly about the Emerging Leaders class that you're with. Oh, that is so exciting, and thank you for telling us about thank it. Thank you. That's how we found out about it. The SBA has an amazing program That's called Emerging little Leaders, little and uh, it is for businesses that are established, have been in business for some years, have a, reached a certain level of growth, and it's mentorship for a period of six months with a group of other like-minded entrepreneurs to get the kind of help you need to take your business to the next level. Great. Well, thank you for bringing some of these samples with you, mm -hmm. and they're very delicious. And I've been dying to try yes, this. Yes, you got to yeah, try it. Yeah, we have a honey yeah. lavender and a coffee and a funky monkey. Mm -hmm. oh, so. Well, I'm not going to be shy. Yeah, you haven't tried those. <laughs> I know the Thank you very much awesome. for your time on the program, and well, we've enjoyed having, having you here. Oh, we, we loved it. Thank it. you, Dennis. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm.